Vietnamese candy is dying. Kèo ni bưởi nhìn mình xúc ra thả hơi ế. Today, kids only want to eat commercially made American candy. But I won't have it. Today, we're getting kids addicted to candy the right way. Do you think that the younger generation will still want to eat this candy? Cũng định có, mình đều ít. Ít thôi. Con biết kèo này là kèo gì không? But we're about to change that. And man, do these guys work fast. We're on a mission to revive candy making techniques from a century old tradition. Dude, my shoulders are getting stiff already. This is crazy. Our journey takes us to a rural sugar factory in Wangnam. Amidst the rustic charm and industrious hum of the village, the locals operate a massive metal press. This engine driven behemoth churns out hundreds of liters of raw sugar cane per hour. But we're not going to be drinking it today. We're going to be cooking this up. We're turning it all the way into sugar or caramel. During the bustling harvest season, the warehouse becomes a hub of ceaseless activity, overflowing with fresh cane. The operation is a blend of traditional skill and teamwork. One person diligently feeds the cane while another manages the husks, later transforming them into fuel for a giant furnace. You see, in the lush highlands of Wang Nam, the landscape undergoes a transition. The rice fields gradually give way to sugarcane patches, dotting the scenery with their tall swaying stalks. Yet this timeless tradition faces change. The advent of large-scale industrial sugar production, often cheaper and more accessible, threatens these tiny facilities. The caramelized sugar blocks, a specialty in this region, are becoming a rarity. To me and others though, their flavor is unparalleled and it's worth the trek out here to get some. It has a sort of like more of a toffee-like flavor than a traditional white sugar that you would just find. Rich flavors, really good. Sweet, obviously. <laughs> Despite these challenges, small havens of tradition persist. Quaint towns like Nom Son on Tubon River continue to uphold these age-old practices. The river has been a vital trade route connecting these small mountain communities to the heart of Vietnam for centuries. Was the juices first transferred over from the Nook Mia, the sugarcane press? It is a really clear, fresh liquid, and you can drink that stuff. It's really good, but way too hot. In the heart of this sugar factory, the furnace blazes with an intensity that is almost alive, fueled by a mountain of dried cane husks. Above this inferno sit five colossal woks. The freshly extracted sugarcane juice is pumped directly into a storage container that can feed into them, and the juice is maneuvered from wok to wok using a makeshift scoop. I'm just realizing that this is actually a helmet. Do you think some US soldier passed away years ago and now they're using his Kevlar helmet as a sugar scoop? <laughs> and as the woks fill, they erupt into action almost instantly. Vast clouds of steam billow through the workshop, turning the air hot and humid. The juice, initially a cloudy liquid, soon becomes a turbulent, churning caramel concoction. And as we watch, the transformation unfolds over the next 30 minutes as it thickens into a rich caramel colored syrup. But the process doesn't end here. It's just this constant flow of sugar moving from one stage to the next. It never really stops. Even the vats, there's sort of always a, one of the vats at a different stage along the way. The intensity of the heat requires careful management. And if left unchecked, the resulting sugar crystals would be large and uneven. Thus begins the critical process of stirring. The caramel liquid is transferred into large wooden tubs and here, with hefty wooden mixing batons, the real artistry begins. They really render this stuff down. It is 
super, super, super thick. For 35 minutes, the mixture is methodically whisked. The meticulous process ensures an even consistency, prevents crystallization, refines the texture, controls the temperature, aids in water evaporation, and even introduces air, which alters the sugar's final texture and color. Ultimately, it is this step that makes the sugar so special. We're getting ready for the final step, transferring the rendered down sugar over to the molds. Aluminum molds are arranged along a wooden plank and the smooth, airy sugar is skillfully poured from a considerable height into the molds, filling each mold perfectly with little waste. After about 20 minutes, the sugar sets and is ready to be released from the molds for packaging and shipping. At this stage, the sugar is a stunning golden brown. It straddles that fine line between raw sugar's natural taste and a deep roast caramel flavor. To me, it is absolutely irresistible. All right, moment of truth, guys. Time to try a little bit of this sugar. Let's just give it a bite. Wow, man. Yeah, that is crazy. This honestly isn't like any kind of sugar you've had before. It's got like a really, really rich caramel flavor. And I think that's because the sugars have been boiled to that sort of turning point. You know what I mean? It's not quite a toffee. It is obviously sweet as hell, but it has a really, really rich, almost candy-like flavor already. It's super good. You could just chow down on a whole chunk of this, I promise you. It is really, really good. Straight from the cane, pretty much nothing added. Just boiled, mixed, rendered down. That is really good. Uh, how long have you been making sugar like this? Uh, we now. Wow, 40 years. That's crazy. Why do people like this sugar so much? Vì đường là tiêu thầu để làm bánh, rồi đường cho vị, chế biến thức ăn. Mm, I see. How often do you make this sugar? Nói chung là tháng chột rồi làm nhiều, còn có tháng kia là làm lá ra. When I tried the sugar, it has a very distinct flavor. Like, what is it about this process that gives it its unique flavor? Cái mùi đặc trưng đó là đến lớp đường nâu. Đến lớp đường nâu là nó ngon nhất. Is anyone buying it in bulk? Có chứ. Mm. Như một một cô là chắc ngàn cô là bao năm gạt là sáu trăm cục đó. Wow. Is she reselling it or is she using all of that? Bỏ sấy cho họ làm bánh. Bỏ cho có cái lò mà họ làm bánh tổ, bánh ít để cung cấp tết. Uh, is that why you're making this now? Because it's about to be tet? Will you get a lot of orders? Nhiều, nhiều lắm có. Đi lòm tới đạt hòn tới Hà Lam, Hà Sá này mà. Thank you very much. It's a super interesting process. I appreciate you letting me have a look around your uh, your factory today. You will find thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be real. No kid's gonna be enamored with chunks of granddad's old school caramel. Boom! Step one complete. Now, let's go make some candy. So we're elevating our game, heading to Hue, the heartland of Vietnamese royal cuisine. <laughs> first for a local rest stop, an unlikely hub where sugar is transformed into delightful peanut and sesame treats. Here, Chun Mi has been on a mission for the last four years to revive a dying sugar treat. And so what makes it so good here? From the material, mm. peanuts, the sesame mm. is from the local. In this new setting, the sugar undergoes a second transformation. It's reboiled into a syrup and stirred in vast vats by mechanized wooden fingers. Toasted sesame, peanuts are all added to infuse it with a rich flavor and aroma. This process, spanning several hours, turns the sugar into a stringy, tacky form. Somewhere in Vietnam, they can uh, make the candy like this, but oh. it's not uh, like this. It's not as good. Yeah. The process continues as they fire up a machine that looks kind of like a concrete mixer, but with a twist. It's got a burner, and this is for roasting the sesame to perfection. Once the seeds reach a deep black hue, they're spread evenly on a large bamboo tray to create a flat base. Next, 
the candied peanut mixture, now a gelatinous stringy form from hours of mixing, is dolloped onto these trays. The mixture is folded into squares with layers and layers of sesame seed being rolled in as they go. And finally, the entire mix is framed with a metal mold to ensure uniformity and it is left to set overnight. Are you selling your candy just in your shop here or are you shipping it elsewhere in Vietnam as well? Here yeah, and um, in the center of uh, Huế. In, in Huế also? Yeah. Wow. But we're picking things up with last night's batch of brown, lightly toasted sesame candy. It's being sliced, packaged and prepared for eager hands. The blocks are run through a slicer, then tumbled into a basket of sesame seeds and swiftly grouped, wrapped and sealed by sending the package through an old oil lamp. Packaging time and these ladies are quick. Good thing we got slow-mo. Okay guys, so we are about to try some of these sesame and peanut candy. I have in my hands the two varieties, one large black sesame and another that's, you know, your standard golden toasted color. Neither of these are really all that hard. I'm cheating a little bit. They still have a little bit of give to them, the candy. The sugar has not completely hardened. It takes several days for that to happen. But this bad boy, this black stuff is right off the ground. It's just been freshly rolled. I think I want to try this first. Let's give it a go. Oh wow, yeah the sugar in that is really soft, it makes sense, they just came off the cookers, you get a little bit of peanut, some sesame, way more sugar than I think you'll find in most candies, but yeah. Well, let's see if there's any difference at all to this kind of golden sesame variety. Oh, hmm, that is a really different flavor. You really don't get that deep, rich, roasted flavor. I'm sure these are roasted slightly, but the sesame in this is both not as crunchy, not as toasty. And the candy in this one, the sugar in this one has really solidified a little bit more. It's got way more chew to it than the black variety that I just had. But my money actually, I really like this black toasted thing. But I'm not done. I'm gonna blow these kids away. I'm seeking something even more rooted in tradition. Something that connects these kids to their ancestral flavors. This kind of stuff is not usually made all that much anymore, but it is still around the New Year, Chinese New Year, Tet as it is called here in Vietnam. So this morning we find ourselves in a sort of rural riverside village here in Hue. It's actually an island, I think. We're about to make some candy. For centuries, villages around Hue, the heartland of the Nguyen dynasty, have been crafting refined candies, savoured alongside tea in royal courts and at local family homes. Go Mai's family, with a legacy of over 100 years in candy making, is a custodian of this tradition. Today, they're creating two distinct types of candy for us. The process begins with boiling sugars down to a light caramel colored thick syrup. Then it is poured into a steel cooling basin. Submerged in water, this keeps it cool. The basin transforms the syrup from a thin liquid to a tacky, malleable golden semi-solid. This pliable sugar sheet is folded into loaves and cut in half. One half stays to cool further, while the other journeys to a tree fork in the courtyard of the family home. Here, the sugar undergoes further transformation. Pulled hundreds of times over the tree branch, it evolves from a dense golden syrup into a fluffy white mass. One ingredient morphed into something completely different. This fluffy sugar is then used to encase the remaining golden brown half that was left on the cooling basin. The caramel center, enveloped in a white fluffy exterior, is elongated into rolls. These are cut into uniform sections that are pressed into squares that go tumbling down into bamboo baskets lined with flour. How has the process changed since when you first made it as a child? Is it the exact same process? Huh. The pace quickens now as more and more family members join in. They roll the candy by hand, shaping the malleable sections into rounded golf ball sized chunks quickly before they harden. Once this is done, the now completely solid chunks are far too big to be eaten as is. 
They're split into quarters with a cleaver and a baton, revealing a stunning cross-section of roast caramel sugar with an airy white shell. Vì cầu cáu là cái kèo đặc sản Mình làm không phá chế, chỉ có đường bên mạch nha Mà mình làm công nghệ không có cái chí là biến chế vô hết Known as a rekia nut candy for its resemblance to the popular Asian stimulant It reminds me of the candied cigarettes I used to have as a kid in Australia At least, it seems to have a similar kind of ethos Candy number two is beginning and it begins in much the same way But this time with a twist Peanuts are added and encased within the stretched fluffy candy this peanut-laden treat is then rolled into thin, uniform sticks. And once set, these sticks are swiftly sliced into bite-sized pieces, ready to captivate with their unique blend of textures and flavor. How many families here still make this kind of candy? Mm. So it's time to try some of these candies. I have two in my hands. The shape is different. One of them has peanuts, one of them doesn't. Let's try first the peanut one. Mm. Now obviously it has an incredibly sugary taste. It's crunchy, but you can easily bite through it. It's a surprisingly good candy considering the sort of traditional methods here. There's obviously no preservatives or anything like that. This to me looks like a tooth destroyer. Let's see how it goes. Oh my god. Wow. Are you supposed to eat this thing? Mmm. Mmm. Oh wow. There is actually more flavoring to this one. I had no idea. But it has like a ginger flavor, a bit of lemon. Man, I almost busted a tooth chewing on that thing. You're quite possibly just supposed to just suck on it and not crunch through it like I did. That was pretty dumb. For my money, you want the sort of rounded egg thing. There you go. Traditional Vietnamese candy. Bạn nó chỉ có nghĩa là một bia có ăn thôi Bà xã ăn uống nước trà, họ ngâm cái kèo đi Có ý nghĩa vậy con, trẻ em đâu bình nếu ăn mấy kèo nhập khẩu hết Chẳng ăn kèo mình, thanh bạn trăm lai đó You know, it kinda, kinda gets me in the feels, a little bit Not too much, but a little bit And so today, we're giving away candy to strange kids Something you're not supposed to do, but you know, I got a YouTube channel Maybe it's, maybe it's allowed Let's see what they think Con, con ăn kèo này chưa? Có biết con kèo này không? Muốn ăn không? Con ăn kèo này chưa? Chưa hả? Con ăn kèo này chưa? Chưa hả? Bình thường con ăn kèo gì? Kèo sô-cô-la Sô-cô-la hả? Đó, đó, đó Ok Con ăn kèo này chưa? Chưa hả? Ăn kèo này chưa? Chưa hả? Ăn kèo đi Con thấy ngon không? Ngon hả? Con thấy ngon không? Ngon hả? Hơi cưng Hơi cưng hả? Con thấy ngon không? Con thích kéo này hay là kéo này? Ok, được That is it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think. Do you think we managed to convince these kids to give up commercialized candies forever? I don't know, I doubt it. It seems like they're at least 50-50, but who knows? At least we introduced them to something that they didn't know existed, some part of their food heritage that they haven't tried before. So that's kind of interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a like and a subscribe. If you enjoyed this content, I would appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.